Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thank you for listening. We've got a lot to get to on this Monday, as usual. This time, SMU coming off a 45-34 win at Tulsa. And boy, uh, that game had a little bit of everything. If you're an SMU fan, a lot of anxiety, a lot of happiness, a little bit of frustration. Um, and we're going to talk about it all and, and certainly what uh, the quarterback situation looks like coming down the stretch of this season, entering the final four games of the regular season now. SMU will play host to uh, Houston on Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time uh, inside Ford Stadium. A huge chance to get one step closer to bowl eligibility. SMU did get one step closer with a 45-34 win at Tulsa, breaking a streak that dated back since uh, to 2009 that SMU had not won at Tulsa. And I, I got to be honest, look, I mean, it's it's one of the more impressive wins that I've seen out of SMU this year. It's one of the better games I think overall they've played. Um, we talked about it going into this game. Tulsa is not as good as these teams that SMU has lost to during the course of this season. Uh, now with UCF having beat Cincinnati, uh, the four teams SMU's lost to have a combined six losses on the season. Pretty unreal. Um, but this Tulsa team's always played SMU tough. And for the most part, they they gave SMU a little bit of a fight. You know, SMU goes out, starts red hot with Preston Stone, jumps up to a 14-0 lead. Danny Gray, had, or uh, excuse me, Danny Gray. I was writing about Danny Gray today. Rasheed Rice catches a 75-yard touchdown pass uh, to open things up. The first play of the game for uh, Preston Stone to throw that ball. I mean, you couldn't have written it up any better uh, for his first career start. Uh, SMU is able to go up 14-0. And then Tulsa starts to battle back 14-7. And that's where uh, things kind of got crazy in this one. Um, SMU was up um, 21-0 at this or 21-7 at this point. Uh, after uh, another scoring drive for the Mustangs, uh, which came uh, by way of two back-to-back Tyler Levine one-yard touchdown runs. Preston Stone goes down with a what sounds like a broken collarbone from what we're hearing and what reports are out there right now. And so his season is, is done, um, which you feel incredibly bad for him. Uh, just all the work he's put in to stay ready uh, – you know, despite playing behind Tanner Mordecai um, and and just staying engaged, staying positive, you know, that's one thing we've always talked about with Preston Stone is how engaged and enthusiastic and, you know, energetic he is in practice. And, you know, he kept that positive energy around the team for a long time this season. He finally gets his chance. He's playing really, really well um, and just kind of a routine run. And he he lands on his collarbone awkwardly and and is out for the season now. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of the tough part with running quarterbacks and wanting to run them sometimes. And I think this will come as Preston gets tackled more at the college level in live settings. You've got to also kind of know how to be tackled in a way. And that one was kind of weird. He kind of you know caught him from behind and ended up landing on him. And. Uh, you know, just his collarbone breaks. And so um, it's it's difficult, you know, to try and coach that when in practice you're not being touched. But um, as as Preston develops into a starter, most likely when when Tanner leaves, if, if Kevin uh, Henry Jennings doesn't uh, end up, you know, giving him too much in the competition that that he doesn't start, let's say, next year, uh, that'll just come with time. He, he's got to find, find a way to preserve his body. It's not an attack or anything like that. It's just an awkward tackle that is the quarterback you've got to avoid. Um, and, and, you know, it ends up costing him the rest of his season, which which sucks, feels so bad for him. But SMU got hit with a ton of adversity there. In comes Kevin Henry Jennings. Hadn't gotten many snaps in practice that week. You know, they were preparing him to be the backup, but you don't – you just lost your starting quarterback that week uh, to concussion and, and a couple other injuries and things like that. And Tanner Mordecai – your your mindsets on getting Preston Stone ready, and no matter how much they would have given Kevin Henry, Henry Jennings, he's probably not necessarily prepared for what he had to go in and do, which is 
in the course of a few days go from third string to backup to having the keys to the car the rest of the game. And he was magnificent. I mean, SMU, great job. Play calling, bled out the final seven minutes or so in the half. They end up getting a field goal out of it. You know, Rhett Lashley said after the game, I would have loved to have gotten a touchdown there. But, I mean, the big thing there was SMU dictated what was going to happen the rest of the half. They they ran the ball well. They had a short field. It wasn't like they went, you know, 80 yards down the field with Kevin Henry Jennings running the football. They had about 45, 50 yards or so, I think it was, to go um, once once Kevin got into the game. And, um, yeah, it, was a, it wasn't even a – it was a 43-yard drive in 16 plays, uh, 14 of which I believe went to Kevin Henry Jennings, uh, maybe 13. But SMU goes down, kicks the field goal to cap the half. Um, you know, Kevin Henry Jennings, I think, dropped back to pass twice. He got sacked on once and then uh, threw and completed another, uh, I believe. Um, I'd have to check officially. But, you know, they didn't ask too much of him. The plan was to try to get the team to half. I, I don't even know if the coaching staff thought, well, we're going to try to bleed out the entire rest of the clock and, and, you know, in the final 30 seconds or so, have a shot at a field goal or a touchdown. But that's ended up, that ended up being what happened. They, they were able to get into the locker room, sit down with Kevin Henry Jennings and say, all right, here's, here's what you need to know. Here's some of the things. Let's catch you up on, on where things stand. And I mean, he was just so calm, cool and collected. And if you've been a subscriber to on the pony express.com, we talked a lot about Kevin's maturity, his just overall talent, and how quickly he really uh, connected well with SMU's offense in fall camp. And so this isn't it, – it's, it's always surprising when you see a true freshman, especially a quarterback, play as well as Kevin Henry Jennings did. But, you know, this is a, this is a prospect that came in, state champion at South Oak Cliff, um, I think I told the story on the podcast uh, maybe when, at, right after I'd gone out to South Oak Cliff this fall. And, you know, the coaching staff kind of, oh, how, how you hearing anything about Kevin? I said, yeah, I mean, he's playing really well. The ball jumps off his hand, all those things. They've really been impressed. And they go, yeah, we were having to rework our entire offense. We did everything around what Kevin can do and how Kevin played and all those things. And that's when I was like, all right, I think SMU might have a good one here. And uh, he showed it. You know, he showed really, I think, how bright the future is uh, for SMU at quarterback with Preston Stone and Kevin Jennings. Preston Stone finished 11 to 17, 219 yards and a touchdown. Kevin Jennings, eight of 11, 91 yards and a touchdown. And I, I think you got to credit the coaching staff and, you know, on our board, sometimes you get everything in kind of a vacuum of, okay, that play call was really rough. You know, when they ran the reverse of Teddy Knox, he loses just a yard, but, you know, once again, a reverse goes nowhere. Um, couple couple calls here or there uh, that you probably say, all right, maybe they like to have that back. I think they threw a deep deep one to um, to Rashi on third and three. Maybe they like to change that one. But I mean, this offense was rolling all game long. Uh, at, at one point, I looked up and I think they were averaging nine yards per play, um, and that that was. Um, that was when Preston Stone had it really rolling. And I think even uh, by the end of the half, I'd really have to look um, and I'll try to look it up right now. But uh, this is an offense that uh, was was averaging close to nine yards of play. I think about halfway through the second quarter when when, uh, you know, Preston Stone entered the game, uh, that was where they were at or where uh, when Kevin Henry Jennings entered the game, they were almost to nine yards a, a, a play. So. You finish with 6.7 yards per play. And with how much SMU ran the ball, uh, quite frankly, the rest of the way, that's terrific. That's what you want. I mean, SMU ran, um, uh, they ended up uh, finishing with six yards per play on 78 plays. Um, just a terrific job uh, by SMU. They finished with over 300 yards in the first half, which I think is the fourth time they've done that this season. Um, so, I think you've got to give a lot of credit to Rhett Lashley, Casey Woods, Johnny Brewer, that whole staff for having both quarterbacks ready to go. Uh, they were both terrific. I mean, it's a good problem to have next year. Look, Tanner Mordecai is going to move on. I think he's going to take a shot at the NFL. He's old enough. It's time to just go. I think everybody knows who he is as a quarterback. He's a good option 
Uh, he helped SMU, uh, quite frankly, you know, be one of the best offenses in, in the country statistically this year. Um, he's not the reason SMU was 500 or is 500 now. Um, and, and he, for the most part, had them in, you know, position to win games. And here or there, they made mistakes around him. He wasn't perfect either. We look at the Cincinnati game for that. But now he's going to move on. Uh, and you're looking at Preston Stone and Kevin Kevin Jennings battling it out. I mean, I don't think, you know, this is something that you're going to go through spring ball and name Preston Stone the starter. I don't think that's fair either. I mean, both quarterbacks now have side-by-side -side comparisons against the same defense uh, as far as how they played, how they performed. Preston Stone has more experience. Who knows? Maybe Kevin Jennings gets more experience this year. You know, SMU, if they can handle business against Houston or, or however that game goes, they go on the road against USF uh, next weekend. USF's not great. They've been playing teams tough, but who knows? If SMU can get on top big, maybe Kevin Jennings plays the second half. I mean, it, that's the type of, you know, situation SMU is in now. They're not fighting for – I mean, their, their conference title hopes are really kind of on life support, so to speak. They need some things to happen. And they need to keep winning, but – you know, there, there's no reason Kevin can't get, uh, you know, more snaps down the stretch. Um, so Tanner Mordecai expected back next week. Preston Stone out for the season. Kevin Jennings, uh, terrific job uh, navigating the second half as well. Uh, really, really impressed. I mean, that throw to Austin Upshaw to open things up was just outstanding. Um, he, you know, picks up 38 yards. Uh, that was really kind of one of those moments where you're like, okay, he's got it. You know, this is – the moment is not too big for him. And Johnny Brewer said after the game, it was actually his idea to throw that ball, uh, to make that change and and call that play. Um, so talk about having the confidence to do that. Um, says a lot about Kevin Jennings. And um, Tyler Levine was saying how they were all picking him up on the sideline, and Kevin echoed that. And uh, so there's there's a lot of camaraderie around this team. And – you can check out my story uh, today on the site about SMU being resilient, uh, and they're hoping that that kind of flips how November goes for them. And over the last uh, seven years, SMU's nine and eighteen in November games, so uh, they're hoping to really flip that. Um, and and look, SMU uh, is you know right right now uh, in a position where they can really you know change the way their season is viewed. So. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how how SMU, um, you know, goes the rest of the way. Tanner Mordecai is going to be back um, and into the fold next week. But uh, this offense did a really good job against Tulsa. Tyler Levine, uh, just an awesome job. 17 carries for 72 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, that's really, really good. Um, you know, for him, average four yards of carry. Uh, he was reliable. He didn't fumble. Uh, Velton Gardner, 2.6 yards per carry on 18 carries for 47 yards. Um, but after Kamar Wheaton went out after his five carries for 31 yards, they needed somebody to come in and kind of help spell Tyler Levine. And that's what he was able to do. So um, kudos to them. Uh, wide receivers, they're banged up. But Rasheed Rice stepped up. Nine receptions, 180 yards, two scores. Um, he was targeted 17 times. I think you've got to give... Rasheed, a lot of credit. He's he's battled through a ton of injuries, and he said, you know what? I didn't practice before Cincinnati. It showed. Yeah, I'm hurt. Yeah, I'm banged up, but I've got to practice. If I, if I can't practice, then I can't play. But if I can practice, then I can somehow find a way to play um, and be at my best. And he was that once again against Tulsa. Uh, Austin Upshaw, three catches, 45 yards. Dylan Goffney had a huge catch uh, in the red zone. Uh, to set up another score. That was massive. Um, so he stepped up. Moochie Dixon was battling. He ended up only really getting a play in there, but he made a 33-yard 33, 33 catch. Ben Redding, one catch for 20 yards and took a pop doing it. I think we're seeing some guys step up at receiver. It's going to be interesting to see if they can get Jordan Curley back for this Houston game. But right now, I mean, you're looking at a pretty banged up unit. They need Moochie Dixon to get back to kind of help spell guys. It's just one of those groups right now that you're almost rolling out just kind of random guys here or there, hoping that they're going to stay healthy. I mean, Rasheed Rice isn't random. 
Upshaw and Goff aren't random, but you've got to uh, find guys that are going to cons- be consistently there because uh, right now it's kind of week to week. You're like, all right, who's going to be healthy? Who's going to be ready to go? But um, Rasheed Rice has been ready to go for pretty much every game this year and just an, another huge you know performance for him. It's no surprise. Um, so, look, I mean, in the second half, SMU was able to, you know, score a couple times, um, you know, keep that thing at bay. Uh, but the the big story of the second half, in a way, because, you know, Tulsa was able to kind of get whatever they wanted at times, uh, was the defense. And, you know, you go up 24-7 at the half and you give up, uh, what is it, 28 points in the second half. Uh, that's not That's not what you want. Um, SMU, you know, it's almost, it was weird. It was almost like in the second half they came out and they were just, they were gas. It's almost like they were, they ran sprints at, at halftime. And, um, you know, they, they just looked a step slow. Uh, Davis Brin was able to get out and make plays with his legs. Uh, they broke a few long runs. They made a few big plays in the passing game. It just was night and day between the first and second half. You look at it, first half, Tulsa, 110 total yards. 67 of which came on the ground. And that is a pitiful offensive performance um, just overall. They ran just 24 plays. Uh, they they turned the ball over and, you know, just, you know, they let, they let SMU get to Davis Brin, uh, three sacks. It was all bad. Then in the second half, uh, they come out and roll up 288 total yards. They make a change to Braylon Braxton at quarterback after Davis Brin got hurt um, and and kind of got nicked up. I, I, I kind of think they just wanted to roll with him with the struggling offense that they had going. And SMU kind of looked, again, like a diff- different defense. They were giving up uh, passing you know conversions on third and fourth down to Braylon Braxton. And uh, he came in and was able to go, you know, hop over the top for for a one yard touchdown run. It just they just kind of slept walked, uh, slept walked through the second half. You know, the biggest play of the game was probably Nick Roberts forcing that fumble. Elijah Chapman picks it up and scores. SMU had just scored a touchdown there um, to go up uh, thirty eight to twenty, uh, and then Elijah Chapman puts SMU up by twenty five with that twenty three yard fumble return for a touchdown. That was huge. Um, you know, that was late in the third quarter. I mean, by then, you're pretty much in control of your destiny and you're headed down the road to victory. We know this series has been wild. We know there's been comebacks left and right. But um, SMU was able to, quite frankly, just uh, control it well enough that, you know, two fourth quarter touchdowns, it happened. There, there wasn't much going on offensively at that point for SMU. Um, I think they ran a total of uh, SMU ran a total of 12 plays uh, or 16 plays over its last, no, 12 plays over its last four drives. So, um, and, and it was fumble, punt, punt, and then uh, they kneeled it out um, for the final two minutes. So it was just not a, you know, offensive performance in the fourth quarter that, that SMU, you know, quite frankly wanted. I mean, but you're down. You're kind of like the, the adrenaline of having Kevin uh, Jennings at quarterback might have been wearing off a little bit. Uh, Tulsa knew they were going to you know go for the run. Um, Tyler Levine couldn't pick up a third and one or or some or a uh, couldn't get couldn't pick up a first down. I think it was maybe third and three or something. He was a little short. Um, that would have helped. But <clears throat> SMU, um, SMU was able to eventually. Um, you'll get enough stops on defense. The defense uh, held in the red zone, was able to force a field goal try uh, that went wide. And and that was kind of it. And then Tulsa had to press, go for it. um, And they turned it over on downs. So the defense last two drives that they had to be out there for really stepped up. I think there, there's kind of been times this year that we've seen some of the, the really bad pieces that SMU has tried to address over the last now however many months with the defense pop up. We saw the first quarter against TCU, these issues pop up. Um, we saw uh, in the second half against UCF at times, SMU secondary had a poor showing in this one, in my opinion. You know, All Tulsa has is Keelan Stokes. Um, they have Juan Carlos Santana, but they really, Tulsa with Braylon Braxton at quarterback, 
um, really ended up, you know, being able to kind of make some plays that you're kind of like, oh gosh, that there had been progression for SMU. And I think the second half against Tulsa saved for forcing that huge fumble um, and the last two drives uh, for Tulsa. Um, it, it just wasn't, it was not a good defensive performance to write home about. It was just, um, it was just kind of all over the place. I mean, there was, there were some positives here and there and uh, overall they, they, um, they just kind of against kind of a average Tulsa offense. They just weren't, weren't as sharp as I thought they'd be um, going into this one, but they did what they needed to do. I mean, it, 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 it was not, you know, horrible overall, but when you look at it in the sense of SMU needed its defense to step up true freshman, at quarterback in the second half, still a ton of time to, you know, get this, you know, win if you're Tulsa and the defense was not necessarily helpful in that regard for a good bit of it. So a little concerning, especially with Houston coming to town this week, we'll talk about them uh, later in the pot later uh, in the week on, uh, you know, the preview edition, but uh, Clayton Toon's playing as well as anybody right now. So you've come into this Houston game coming off one of your kind of, you know, mediocre pass defense performances of the season. Uh, you've got to get some things right. Tuesday's fundamental day for SMU. Uh, they've got to address a lot of things in that respect. So um, overall, I mean, I think you got to look at this one like this. SMU started fast on the road. They took care of the football, save uh, Kevin Jennings' fumble that that he had in the second half. And uh, they still managed to, you know, quite frankly, dictate things uh, to Tulsa in terms of how the game's played and how it you know, should be played um, overall. So um, you've got to really like what SMU did. Uh, a win is a win. They needed to break the curse. Uh, and that's what happened. So um, with that, going to wrap up this edition of the podcast. We'll be back later this week for another edition. We will catch you guys next time. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate you guys listening. And um, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the game this weekend.